We get a lot of people asking about transportation on the island. People who are moving here ask if they need to ship their car, how easy it is to buy a car here on the island. And people who are just coming for a visit wondering about transportation here and how easy it is to get around the island. Do you need a car in American Samoa? Well, the answer's probably yes. What you have to understand about American Samoa, especially its main island of Tutuila, is that while the islands themselves are not really big, in fact, Tutuila is only about the size of Catalina Island in California, uh, everything is still very kind of spread out here. There's villages from the very east end all the way to the very west end, and it's just not possible to get around everywhere you need to go just by walking. You can hop on a bus. Here they're called Ainga buses. So Ainga means family in Samoan. So these are buses that are owned by individual families, but they all follow the same uh, guidelines for schedule and price per ride. Only one dollar for adults. A quarter for kids. These buses are known for their bright colorful design and for their pumping music. When a bus is, just isn't going to work, lots of people use taxis too. There are lots of them, it's easy to call them up. Most people know somebody with a taxi. And the island isn't super bike friendly. There are dogs that like to chase bikes and most of them aren't dangerous, but they can be a nuisance when you're riding your bike as well as the fact that there aren't many bike lanes around the island. If you're just going between Tafuna and Pongo Pongo, then bikes can be a reasonable option. But anywhere else around the island, there are no sidewalks and very little shoulder to be able to ride your bike along. When we first got here, we didn't have a car. And so we did do a lot of walking. And as we'd be out walking, it was not uncommon for somebody to just pull over and say, hey, where are you heading? Oh, we're heading there. And they'd say, just go ahead and hop on in. We've never felt in danger or anything. If you're here for just a day or a few days and you don't want to rely solely on the Ainga buses, which again, you should give it a try but you can always rent a car. A couple that we know of and trust are American Samoa car rentals and coconut car rentals. And we can include some contact information in the description. Now, if you decide that public transportation isn't your thing, you really just have two options. That is to buy a car here on island or to ship a car in from the mainland or wherever you're coming from. I bought a scooter right off the bat, a little 50cc scooter, because really you're never going anywhere on this island with more than 25 miles an hour. That is the max speed limit anywhere on this island. And some places it's much lower 
Like for instance, no joke, the road that we are on right at this moment has a five mile an hour speed limit. It's true. So after Melinda and the kids arrived on island, the scooter wasn't gonna work for all of us. So we looked and looked and looked for a vehicle and there are some resources out there. There's nothing like Craigslist here. There's no used car lots to go and just kind of peruse. You really are at the mercy of the very, very limited used automobile market here on the island. The best place to start looking is on Facebook. Through Facebook Marketplace groups, there's a American Samoa Deals and Steals, 684 Buy, Sell, Trade. There are a few of them um, that you can find on Facebook. So you're going to get either one of three things. You're gonna get really lucky and find something just right for the right price, and basically that doesn't happen but you might. <laughs> Number two, you're going to just have to settle for a real junker. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen. Uh, number three, you're just going to end up paying a lot for what you're going to get. I joke about it because it is a piece of junk, <laughs> but we were grateful to get it. And this thing has been super reliable actually. It has taken us over all the roads, over every mountain, on all of our adventures we've taken all over this island, this baby has gotten us there. For the first two years that we lived here in American Samoa, Melinda and the kids drove the Toyota Corolla that we showed you. And I actually drove a little 50cc scooter back and forth from work every day. And it worked okay, but the weirdest thing is my scooter got stolen one day, which is just crazy for American Samoa because vehicles don't get stolen here. There's really no place to take them or hide them. It meant that we had to get something new. We decided instead of getting another scooter, get a second vehicle. So we bought this. This is a 2007 Toyota RAV4. Now, we got a pretty good deal on it because we were fortunate enough to talk to the right people. We had some friends that happened to be selling it. We bought it for about $7,000, which might be a little bit below market value in American Samoa. But you can use it as a point of reference. If you're going to be moving here and you're looking for a vehicle, it might not be a bad, good price to look for on a vehicle like this. You'll have a little bit more luck finding maybe the exact car you want if you are willing to go buy a brand new car because there are a couple of new car lots on the island. Ford, new Toyota, or a Hyundai, I think are the main ones you can find here. The only problem you're gonna run into with the new car route, whatever the, the markup is you'd expect on a new car in the States, expect a, an extra 15 to $20,000 here for a brand new car. If you can afford that, that's great. It's a great way to go. If not, you're gonna be busting it or walking it or driving an island car like us. Bring me up higher. Bring me up higher. When I've been to Fiji or over to Western Samoa, I tell them that we're from American Samoa, people laugh, they're like, oh, American Samoa, those, they like their big trucks there. And it's funny, because it's true. The pickup truck is absolutely king in American Samoa. When we first moved here, I couldn't believe like every other car was a Toyota Tacoma, because it's kind of the perfect truck for this island. It's not too big, it's small, I can get it around, it can kind of get up some of the, the little trails. Um, but it can kind of still be a little bit lifted and look cool. Now some vehicles that you really don't see a lot of are things like minivans, convertibles, which really surprised me. I figured we're on a tropical island, which makes sense. The fabric top would just disintegrate in this tropical climate. If you don't want to deal with the hassle of buying a car here locally, you can always ship a vehicle from off island. We haven't ever done this personally, but we know people who have and it sounds like it's a completely doable option. From what we've learned, it's about $3,500 to ship from mainland US, and we've included some links down below in the description of companies that are known and trusted for this. Once you've got your vehicle, then you need to make sure you've got your driver's license, registration, insurance, all of that. And we won't go into that very much here. We did a whole video all about all of that. You just head down to the OMV, 
there in Tafuna and you can get that all taken care of. And insurance here is really straightforward. For just straight liability insurance, it's about 150, 160 a year. For more information on prices of the registration and driver's license, check out that video. We put a link to it right up there. As far as mechanics on the island are concerned, uh, you're gonna have a couple of options. There are a lot of kind of small private mechanics that will do work for you and it can be pretty expensive. You can find folks that will work for 20 or $30 an hour and it goes up to going with one of the major auto dealerships. And there you're talking about it being significantly more expensive. But even on the, the more inexpensive end of things, there are a number of really good, reliable, certified, well-trained mechanics. So if you do have problems, you're gonna be able to find something that is within your budget. In general, if you look at the average price of gasoline in the United States, you can usually add about 20 cents to it, and that's typically what the cost of gasoline is here in American Samoa. A good way to learn a little bit of the language is when you go to the gas pump, you just simply ask for the amount of gas that you want in the value of the gas. So we often will get gas in $20 increments. So when we pull up to the gas pump, we like to say, <laughs> Well guys, that's about as much information about the transportation costs you can expect when you come to American Samoa. So if there's something that you think we missed, let us know down in the comments down below. Or if there's something more you're wondering about, let us know that too and we can cover it in a future video. We love your comments. Make sure to like this video and please subscribe. Thanks again for coming along with us today. Bye.